I feel so alive when I'm with you. Glad to hear it. All right, let's switch over to the TTS view. Looks like first round is Enchantress versus Ryu. Oh, this is quite a... You know, we talked to Ashlyn after her last game, and she was saying that she didn't want this matchup to ever happen. Well... Uh, it sounds like <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Uh, can't always get what you want. That's absolutely true. So what, what do you think is the winning play for both of these characters? So when, I, when we were talking to Ashlyn post-game last um, set, Ashlyn said that this matchup is basically determined by Ryu's capability to Hadouken. So do you think uh, Enchantress should be looking for ways to discard Hadouken or parry Hadouken? That makes sense. Enchantress has a decent amount of hand control and hand information abilities, so she may be able to get it out of his hands before it becomes a significant threat. If he relies on critical uh, wild swinging it, then she does have one or two ways to answer it at long range. If he draws it into his hand, then obviously it'll be known and she can use either mind control or parry to get it out. Absolutely correct. Um, how much of this matchup do you think is going to be Ashlyn having to adapt to reuse Hadouken and instead playing Brawler Enchantress by using her uh, superior hand economy to just strike nonstop? Hmm, that's a good question. I think um, she's going to need to rely on her superior ability to control resources, simply because brawling against Ryu when you don't have a lot of stat boosts to lean into is dangerous business. Ryu has defensive, swifts, and way of the warrior mm -hmm. working for him. Enchantress only has a couple of power boosts, and they're both very situational. That makes sense. It's it's really a, it's usually this kind of strategy works against characters who maybe have weaker range one capabilities than the average character. But Ryu does not. <laughs> Ryu has some really powerful range 1. In fact, even range 2, even range 3, that's Ryu for you. Mm hmm no bad ranges. Alright, I should have the overlay set up so that you can see, so that the matchup is listed. We're still in setup here. Uh, let's see, I'm not familiar with Aniel. Uh, Rascal Queen is Ashlyn, noted as one of the more aggressive players in the Discord. Specifically an aggressive set play character, that's why she likes Taisei and uh, Akuma so much. But she isn't running right. Akuma this tournament, she swaps him out for Enchantress so that she can handle different a different type of matchup. Right, because having three of the same character, quote-unquote, is not a great idea for tournament settings. Mm -hmm. Alright, coin toss right. is done. You think, yep, I was about to say, you think Enchantress would want to go first? Yes, uh, going first means that you can threaten turn one Homing Orb. Uh, homing Orb is an attack with range X. X is equal to the number of cards in your hand. So if you have five cards in your right. hand and you play it, then you have four left, which means it hits from starting positions at speed six. Um, which Quite powerful. Yeah, <laughs> where you just can't do anything about it. Uh, Tatsumaki isn't stunned by it, but because Homing Orb has hit push or pull one, it'll push him back and he won't be able to trade. This is Right, there's basically nothing Ryu can do against that, so Ryu would basically just have to Wild Swing or Sandbag against it. Um, Hang on. Yeah? We might have a technical error. Uh, on stream? Oh no! Uh, just a sec. Cool. So so while we're waiting for that, uh, I think this is a very interesting... Oh. No, oh go ahead, go ahead. Up. You're good. All right. I think I think this is going to be a very interesting matchup because this is, this is all really going to be decided on how well both of these players use their resources. Ryu has a lot of boost game, for sure. But if Enchantress finds a way to eke out of that boost game, to be very, very dangerous for Ryu. And, of course, if the Hadokens don't go well and Enchantress is able to defend against them, thanks to maybe EX Homing Orb, or maybe even just a Flying Charge, um, we might see this game go a very different direction. Uh... Should probably reduce the lift height in order to fix that. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so for people who might not be able to see the chat, um, currently Adniel's cards are lifting too high, which removes it from the hand, which reveals them to the opponent. This is not ideal in the game of Exceed. Um, so you might want to lower your lift height there. And while we're waiting on that, okay. Daniel, who do you favor in this matchup? I know, I know, Ashlyn has her feelings, but how how do you feel? All right. Uh, in general, I do think Ryu is favored. I think it. Uh, I would agree that it kind of comes down to Hadouken and how effectively Enchantress is able to run out that option. Oh, do you think this is the turn one homing orb? 
Uh, almost certainly. It could also be a fire wave. Um, fire wave isn't especially unsafe against Ryu because he doesn't have right. anything faster than speed four from starting positions. Makes sense. How how much are you willing to bet that this is just dive for Ashlyn to mix Ryu up? I don't think so. Moving into melee, uh, even with dive, would be a mistake. The mix up is really between homing orb fire wave and magic missile, all of which are ranged options. Uh, right. It is probably correct across the board for Ryu to respond with Tatsumaki if he has it. Yeah, Tatsu's pretty good. Uh, even if you don't hit, you at least get closer, right? And then you can use Ryu step to get to whatever range you want exactly. So mm -hmm. we'll see how the response goes. It is the homing it orb. It is the homing orb. It is the Tatsu. Right. All right, so he won't be stunned, which means he'll be able to advance too with his before effect, uh, letting right. him get a closer position on his own turn. I think he'll get to, he'll end up at range three. Yes. Mm-hmm. So here's here's the big brain play, Daniel. Mm -hmm. um, what if Ashlyn just has second homing orb, and she just plays it next strike? That would be hilarious, but I don't think there's much chance of you standing at range three for this turn. I think he'll step in. He could just play an assault, is what I'm saying. Because ah. this is actually prime assault territory. That's true. That's true. I would probably take the Ryu action, um, depending on what he has in that hand. Uh, Donkey Kick is a major threat at range two in particular. Right, right. How? Yeah, especially if Don especially if he has Hadoken in his hand. Then if he just Donkey Kicks, then Hadoken, it's gonna be a rough game. Agreed. He needs to get some gauge one way or the other, so that he can threaten his critical abilities. Oh, right. we do. Sounds like right. this is the assault. I'll be dang. Homing orb number two. You called it. <laughs> nicely, nicely done. Nicely done. Homing orb number two uh, hits, stuns out the assaults, and pushes right. Ryu back to range four, and gives him chances to turn. She is out two this of her is best a projectiles. This really good opening, right? It is. She's out two of her best projectiles, though. So that is true. We'll and that's her only quote unquote way of being easily of handling Hadoken easily. So it's gonna be you know this seems like a really good opening but the mid game and the end game is gonna be really rough once Ryu gets set up mm. well once he has it if he relies on critical Hidoken, she can still answer with fire wave uh what's going to be a problem here is oh there's fire wave yeah so enchantress can actually struggle to empty out her hand if her hand size is at awkward uh in certain awkward increments so right then she had three right. cards in hands and she could advance three to get rid of them but that puts her at range one which she doesn't want uh, right. she, she could not choose to retreat three. She still needs to spend a force to validate that attack. There we go. Interesting that she chose Gage. Yeah, that must mean that she actually likes what she has left in hand. Normally Enchantress is eager to ditch those cards so that she can reload at the end of a strike or at the end of a turn. Right, exactly. Or, you know, and keep the Gage so that she can exceed, right? Because she needs that four Gage to get her free shuffle. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has a decent mm. amount of deck to work through to get it, though. Yeah, that's fair. I think this is going to be a really interesting thing, because now Ryu's probably scared. I'm guessing that one of these is Magic Shot, because no other reason would she just keep the cards in her hand, right? I tend to so. agree. Magic Shot is a 1 for a special attack that is range 2 to 5, speed 5, 2 power. Doesn't hit for much damage, but it has a hit effect that adds the top of your discard to your gauge, meaning if Enchantress lands it, it is an instant for gauge. Right, so maybe that's why she was willing to throw gauge, because she just has the gauge in her pocket now. Hmm. But here's here comes Ryu! That's Ryu with the, the uh, wave of the Wario, it's going to be very, very scary. What does Enchantress do in response? I think, would you step in two spaces just to not get Hadoken loot? Do the opposite. I would step away and look and draw in my, into my second Fire Wave. Uh, notably, Ryu did drop his second copy of Focus there. Um, if she means... goes away, doesn't she still get hit by Hadoken? She does, but she can, But if she draws into a Fire Wave, she'll have the defenses to be able to tank it on uh, turns when he doesn't have Wave of the Wario in play. Eating one Hadoken is not a big deal. Denying the loop is what's important. Right, right, that's fair. Um, yeah. Uh, there's the flying charge boost. That is a boost, yes. So she's spending one force. The opponent reveals uh, one card of his choice, because she only spent one force, and that card will be discarded. So basically, Ryu just picks a card to discard. Right. This is a very um, low-value play, but she just needs to get rid of that hand. Yeah, she's probably just reloading, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, there, there goes the Enchantress reload. Mm-hmm. Ryu's still making that discard decision. Right. Toss it. Oh, oh he loses rid of the donkey, donkey kick. kick. Interesting. All right. All right. So that one of those other cards, cards in his hand are good. Yeah, they have to have either dive or Hadoken in there uh, because otherwise there's just no way he'd be willing to keep them. Like you have to have a life threat at this range, and right, he does because right. he is striking. That has to be the Hadoken. It could be the other Tatsu, but that would be pretty surprising. I think it is the other. That would be spicy. The is first what I'm gonna say. Yeah. It would indeed. All right. Well, Enchantress's best option here is to block if she has it. Or wild swing. Mm, There's the Hadoken. That's invalid. Not the Hadoken, the Shattering Screen. 
That's invalid. Well, that's all. Ashley needs to learn the lesson that those are invalid. Oof. Uh, oof. All right. So if anyone she has in hand, she might still be able to answer a Hadouken. Right. Um, is he going to recur? So at this point, quick question, Daniel. Given that Ryu has such a low hand, wouldn't you just step in so that you don't get looped? Uh, no, I'm fairly confident in my range dominance, dominance if I'm the Enchantress. Um, okay. I would look at boosting something so that I could tank Hadouken if I have a Fire Wave, then I'm not worried about it. Uh, or I could draw into an EX Magic Shot. It just depends. Enchantress really has to work with her hand shape as it is because she doesn't have the ability to retain cards like other characters. Right, and she also doesn't have the ability... She, she has to throw away her cards to get her reloads, and she doesn't really draw at the end of every action, so she has to take the reload. Exactly. Fair. Yeah, I, I'm a bit of a on the opposite end here because I don't think Fire Wave correctly answers Hadouken, right? Because even if it trades, uh, you end up pushing Ryu further away, and then Ryu can just Ryu step back into the range and then Hadouken you again. That's so true. I'm not... But it gives you the range I'm not exactly to... sure. It pushes him away to range 6, which means that you have space to retreat. Uh, speed means that Magic Shot is now threatening... Yeah, there's that. Enchantress. There, there's, the, there's, the, there's the Enchantress UA. <laughs> yep. Enchantress uh, drew at the end of the turn as a reflex, because that is what every other character does. But she does not, so I have to shuffle that card back. Right. So that, that sweep is actually... That sweep boost is actually just ruining the loop. I think this was the correct play. Like, if, if Ashlyn had this, Ashlyn should have played it, and Ashlyn did. It's a good play. Yep. And now she has the block available. Well, she probably doesn't have the block, or she would have played it against the Hadouken earlier, because that was basically face up. Uh, it would right. be ideal to get that Hadouken out of his hand, but she probably doesn't have parry. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So now I think Enchantress should. Hmm, what should Enchantress do at this point? Should Enchantress? I assume Enchantress doesn't want to strike because you want to keep this. You want to keep the state, right? You want to force Ryu to do something. That's correct. She has the advantage, and she shouldn't waste it. Um, she should be. Yeah, there you go. I was just thinking she should be playing one of her more technical boosts. Uh, this one will not get rid of her entire hand, but it's still a decent one. She spends three force. Uh, that is basically an expensive parry. She'll get to see the. It's a really expensive parry. Yep. She'll see the other two cards in his hand as well as the Hadouken, and then she'll probably force him to discard the Hadouken, removing that threat for the rest of the game until he draws the other right. copy. Oh, but that's a Metsu and a Tatsu, though. That's a good hand. Um, in terms of raw value, Metsu Shoryu might be the most important card here. Um, the other two are. This is just a really good hand. So yeah, she there we go. Yep, she chooses to leave him with the Hadouken in order to deprive the Metsu Shoryu, which also has Lightning Reflexes on it, which is an important boost. Right, because it gets Ryu back into melee, and, you know, it's Metsu, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. All right. Okay. It looks like he's decided to gamble that she does not actually have an option to answer the Hadouken. Uh, or yes. that's Tatsu. Or, There's a natural mix-up Or here. that's just Tatsu, and nothing can beat it anyway. You know? uh, Dive beats it. Right, right, right. So she could... She, but she'd end up at range one, and we're back to that same soul, old song and dance, right? We... Where Enchantress doesn't want to be range one against Ryu, so. Well, at that point, she will be able to attain a resource advantage very quickly because he'll be he'll spend most of his hand, and Enchantress can trivially reload at that point. So. Right, she can just move call? back too. That's fair. I think my call here is that it's the Tatsu and not the Hado. He would have probably played the crit if it was the Hado, even though it's not safe. Right, right. Though maybe it's just maybe that's just the mix-up, right? Like there's something mm -hmm. to be said about just not critting to do the mix-up. Indeed. And giving your opponent the chance to make a mistake. Yep, let's see what we get. See what we get. It, it is magic, magic shot. shot against... Okay, well, uh, it was that or wild swing, so this way she guarantees that 4 gauge, and she will at least trade. Uh, she's also yep. going to get her full reload, putting her at 6 cards in hand and Rio with 1 at range 2, where she knows the card in his hand is no good. This is actually a great time for Enchantress to go on the offensive. Right, Enchantress would strike here or boost a really powerful boost. Mm-hmm. This is this is the this is the chance, right? This is the space you needed. Exactly. Ryu doesn't have any like the only card in his hand is Hadouken. It's useless at this range. If she strikes, he's going to have to wild swing, and if he wants to get a uh, Shoryuken to be effective, he'll have to critical wild swing, which is very risky. Right. It's very risky. It's a, a huge use of resources. So we'll have to see what Adniel decides to do. Mm -hmm. It's also possible this, this is just this unbeatable. Has to be a wild swing. It could just be a cross. Yeah. Of course, he will wild swing. The question is, will he crit? No. That's the that's the real. question. Oh, you can't wild swing your whole deck. Uh, yeah, one card at a time. Yeah, I mean, I wish I could. Yeah, uh, this is something that really only happens in TTS. In real life, that doesn't generally come up. Uh, it is the cross, cross which is basically speed. unbeatable here. Nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. So, what is Ryu's option here? Hadoken. Think he'll run it? I do think that it will basically. Here's the thing, right? Like, there's a there's a fire wave still up. 
Uh, mm -hmm. There could be the other flying charge, yes. Right. And, um, or no, no, she spent both of those, actually. Oh, she spent... Or, okay, so it, it's just really fire wave. And here's the thing. If she fire waves him, he'll end up at six, and Hadouken can still hit anyway. That's true. So... Here's my counter. Oh! If he were to throw the Hadouken from there, then decides to recur it, it goes on top of his deck, or if he doesn't, he's wild swinging some random card. Enchantress can then take the next turn to move in, leaving him with basically no options. Yeah, There's that's the fair. There's the parry. That'll knock out the Hadouken Excellent. almost certainly. Yep, there it is. All right, one, one right. Hadouken and, remains. And that was my counterpoint to your counterpoint. <laughs> but what if he just what if he just gets loses the Hadouken? And there we go, we lost the Hadouken. Uh, so now mm -hmm. we're probably digging for Hadouken number two. Hold on. I think a chance is true after the parry, which would be a mistake. Yes, it would be a mistake. All right, we've corrected that. All right. Are we also the tournament judges? <laughs> uh, I'm allowed to step in if there is an infraction. Uh, this is strictly for corrections, never for coaching, never for advice. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Basically, if uh, if somebody plays the game literally not rules correct, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, um, it's Ryu's turn. Do you think that Ryu wants to step into range two? I think he does. At that range, he at the very least can threaten a. Uh, a Donkey Kick or a Critical Shriyuken. And Enchantress just isn't very threatening at range 2. She's going to be relying on her normal slot at this point. And she already lost her cross, so it's lost one cross at least. So mm -hmm. It'll be awkward for her to get out of the corner, although she'll probably run out of the corner with her hand and then just reload. Right. Uh, this might be an assault. Oh, we have I a critical? Okay, it's a crit. Oh, uh -huh. that is telegraphing. That is the other copy of Hadouken. But that's Hadouken number 2, right? Yeah, but at range 3, that's very unsafe. Uh, Enchantress right. can trade with it, so this could also be a critical spike, just to mess with Enchantress's head and force her to play something defensive, which she would then crash. Right, right, right. It would it, Enchantress could attempt to sweep or something like that, and then just get ruined. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how big brain that play is, but we'll see. Spike against Hadouken. Okay, so that'll well, make the trade. Right, that's Hadouken number two. Mm -hmm. Which means what is on top of his deck is known. If Enchantress moves into melee, uh, Ryu basically has to prep to have a chance of having anything that'll work. Right. Oh, and he is choosing oh. to recur it. Yep, that will leave him without uh, anything other than Hadouken available. To be fair, though, if Enchantress does end up moving in, uh, it's going to be really awkward for her because she can't... Um, what do you call this? Uh, Ryu gets a chance to prep, so he might have a lack of options. But remember, Enchantress has her last 10 cards left. Mm -hmm. So if she does do a full reload, um, basically the options will be very predictable on Enchantress's end. This but is on true. Ryu, it's less predictable. This is true. Uh, however, we have seen only one copy of Shadowing Scream, if I recall correctly, uh, and one wrapped them down. If there is a Shadowing Scream remaining, and I didn't miss counts, then that would be a very potent option at nearly closing out the game. Basically, she just needs to hit for 12 damage. That's two cards with six. All right, there we go. There's the reload that we were expecting. Yep, she's moving out to range two. All right. This is really interesting to me that she decided to move to range two, because now Ryu can Ryu step backwards. Mm -hmm. But at 3, it's still unsafe to try to trade with Hadouken because she has life advantage. If you have the life lead, it's not really a problem. But being behind makes it much more much riskier. Right. Um, yeah, this is going to be a really tough position for Ryu to be in. I don't know why Ryu's holding on to a lot of this gauge. Is he attempting to play a Metsu Hadouken? Um, mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because right now, I would basically want to either move or change cards to get some better options. I tend to agree. Uh, let's see. She plays lights, accidentally draws, corrects it. Yeah. Light is quite good here. It, hmm. hmm. What do you think? I think flying charge is a big threat as well. But now that the sweep is down, that's uh this changes the context of this because now the line of sweep into shattering scream for the instant confirm kill that no longer exists. Oh, we so, have a destructive force which is hit the opponent must discard may discard up to two cards and if they don't discard two cards it's plus three power. So you get to right. choose if you're gonna spend force or take damage. That's gonna be really rough. Um I don't think that we've seen a single focus on Enchantress's end, have we? Mm, I don't think so. There might have been one dropped, but certainly not more than one. Right. That means... Uh, oh, okay. We okay, have, have some light. speed boost. This means that uh, sure, you can crit it is not safe. That's really bad. That's actually really bad for you. Mm -hmm. It is... Well, the speed boosts are now tied. Um, Enchantress techs. Okay. Oh. That leaves her out of techs, which means if another way of the warrior comes up, she won't be able to answer it. But that is a risk sometimes you have to take. Right. Um... So basically, the line that I'm thinking that's going to happen here is that Ryu does Way of the Warrior, and then Enchantress attempts to cross number two, 
and then Ryu responds with um, Critted Hadoken. I think that would be the ideal line for you, but it doesn't seem like he has it. Mm, did you mean Shoryuken? Uh, yes, sorry, okay. Shoryuken. That makes sense. All right, back step, moving to range. Does not draw. Barely yes. catches it. <laughs> barely, barely, barely. Yeah, sorry. I, I meant, yeah, I meant Shoryu. But now, now we're at range four. Uh, that means Enchanted says something that beats <clears throat> Hadoken at this range. She wouldn't have gone here otherwise. Mm -hmm. Well, Flying Charge will do that just fine. Um, yeah, Long Flying Charge would do it just fine. I mean, it would trade, right? Mm hmm. Interesting. We're at three. Why does Ryu want to be specifically at three? What just happens? Oh, that card isn't on his discard pile. That had a, his discard order is weird. Right. Moving closer! Yeah, it's definitely a weird thing happening there. Yep, moving into range one and striking. This is an interesting line. What do you think this could be? This could just be his focus. I am fairly nope. convinced. He's out of foci. He's been both of them early on. Oh, then I don't know what this play is. Because hmm. even the focus is risky, because now he can't even discard the two cards. That's true. Yeah, since it dropped that last card out of his hand, it's it's really hard to say that this is safe. It might be a block just intended to defuse her threats. But it would cost That's him, also entirely possible. It, it would cost him quite a bit of resources to do that, depending on what she throws. Right. I mean, why didn't he just play block from two, right? Oh, it was a grasp. Wow, that was cheeky. Uh, it won't go well for him because she did play Spiral Orb, which is her focus-like. Now, she yeah, decides to spend uh, whether... She has to pay the force cost of her attack. If she throws from hand, though, it will consume her reshuffle because she only has four cards left in deck. Right, right. Which isn't that big of a problem. I think this game will end before that matters. Yep. Oh, hold on a moment. I forgot about Spiral Orb's text. It has hit and after effects, which let her manipulate her hand size, so she will not be forced to reshuffle. I take that back. Oh my, it looks like Ryu chose to take the... Oh wait, he didn't have a choice. Uh, I'm yeah, Ryu say, has to take ow. that damage. Yeah. Yeah, it's a yikes. Alright, well, Chandra seems to have managed to deal with the Halicon threat effectively by staying in range to trade, uh, and pairing right. one out when it became too hard for her to deal with. It looks like she did not elect to change her hand with Spiral Orb, or maybe she's still making that decision. Right. Um, either way, I think this, depending on what cards are left in the deck, and again, we haven't been able to keep track, and we can't look at the discards, an Enchantress Shuffle. Yep, that makes perfect sense. That is her Exceed mode, which gives her a free shuffle. That is to say, a reshuffle that does not consume her once per game reshuffle, and reloads yes. her hand to seven. I think that was a very good play, especially considering that Enchantress only had one card left. Agreed, I think it was perfect timing. This style makes things very difficult for Ryu. Yeah, Ryu's basically big comeback here. I believe would be to have to use a reading and to have to use a Metsu, but both Metsus are gone, so you have to reshuffle. So it's a, it's an uphill climb, <laughs> definitely an uphill climb. Hmm. He has three gauge, and we haven't seen the second Metsu Hado, right? But he won't be able to get to range three to use it. Right, right. I'm talking about Metsu Shoryu, right? Ah, um, yes. But currently, there's no, there's no, there are no live Metsu Shoryu, so you'd have to reshuffle to get that, and that that becomes really rough. Mm hmm. Yeah, reshuffle is, um, it's a kind of a low tempo action. She's spending three force to make him, see, uh, yep, she's going to see that hand, make him discard a card from it. Right, it's probably going to get rid of the best option in that hand. Um, it might also reveal one or more normals, and, sh and she now could have a reading live. Right, right. Ooh, well, that's going to nuke the Metsuhado. All right, that's going to definitely take the Metsuhado, because you want to get rid of Wave of the Warrior. Mm -hmm. And now Ryu's really on the back pedal. Now we know his entire hand. None of his hand is useful at this range. And if he ends up having to block whatever Enchantress's attack is, it means that Ryu's now going to have to essentially contest with only having like three gauge or something. Not mm -hmm. good. Yep. He's prepping. Uh, he feels cornered, and I think he is cornered, uh, at least in a strategic sense, not only a literal one. Yeah, I do think that change cards is the correct play there. I don't think preparing is very... You don't have any of your ultras anymore. And so I definitely well... think getting rid of that known block uh, is, is important, because even if it, like, granted, reading block isn't very threatening, but it's threatening enough, because you can play something like Sweep and knock out even more of your options, forcing you to run out of resource disadvantage. Right. I mean, she could have just easily walked to range 2 or 3, and then reading after, right? Mm-hmm. To spike, I mean. Striking with one card, this is probably a focus, a Sweep, something else to threaten lethal, or just a Swirl. Right. Something slow and tradey. Yeah, uh, that that seems to be the the correct play in my mind. So does he run Shoryu, betting that it's a mid speed, or does he play the block? 
He runs nope, Shoryu and Ryu. punishes the cross. What a play, Ryu. What <laughs> a play. Okay, now do that five more times and you're fine. Uh, three more times. <laughs> Sorry, three more times. No, no, you just one of them just has to be a Metsu. Uh, right. Well, that means he'll need to reshuffle immediately in order to gain access to the threats once again. Yeah, that's uh, oh. that's pretty rough. Prepares. That digs him deeper into this deck, which does not contain any of his powerful late game threats. He might be able to throw right. another Shoryu out, but I'm concerned about this from the Ryu perspective. I think the idea here is that since Enchantress, okay, we're gonna parry. I assume the other block. Um, not sure. Maybe or the just one hand reveal. No hand reveal. Well, we don't know for sure what, what is being named as the parry, uh, but it looks like it's going to whiff because Aniel was getting ready to reveal that hands. Yep. The hand reveal is going to be very important for Enchantress here. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a lot of normals. 0344 four and Hadouken. All right, this looks to me like a CC4 or greater turn coming up. CC3, in my opinion. Think you keep the block? Yeah, I think I do keep the block. Like, the thing about it is if Enchantress calls it, I think that's going to be pseudo-fine. I have so much gauge to spare. That's fair. He has built up a high, uh, tiny number of resources. He could also just do a, one of those trademark massive CCs of, like, 8 or 9. But with 8 cards in deck, that doesn't help him draw into those late-game threats. Right. He doesn't have good EXs left, right? Like, he's mm -hmm. used, like, almost one copy of each card. So I don't think doing massive CC is great right now. Mm -hmm. He definitely needs to get rid of those normals where he's almost certainly going to be subject to a reading in the near future. And Chantress is drawn through almost half her deck again. Right, right. And this is going to be really rough. So I do think that change cards is the correct play. The question really is how many of the cards are going to get changed. Mm -hmm. Which of the cards are going to get changed. I do think that the block is okay to keep because Enchantress doesn't deal enough damage for it to be relevant. He's oh. using the parry. Oh, that could be a parry reading. Oh, sorry, parry focus to get rid of the reading threat. Right, but I don't know why you would want to keep those three other normals in your hand, right? They're not really that good in this He in this did situation. not parry focus because she has a focus. Um, does she have checkmates? You just checkmates? wanted to see the hand? No, no, she parried... He probably... Uh, sorry, I don't, I don't know who Adniel is, but Ryu probably um, parried something and it just whiffed. That's tough beans, because now Enchantress can just... Reading the spike that's in Ryu's hand and then get a free turn. Uh, no, and get a free kill. Reading Spike, play Dive. Oh, yeah, there you go. Good game. That's lethal. We'll see if Ashton well, well, sees it. If, yeah. If, um, let's see if Ashton sees the line, though. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's possible for you to have drawn EX Spike. No, I think he spent one already. All right. This is the moment. And there it... Whoa. Oh! Not using the reading. All right, spinning those known normals to get out of melee. Looks like she's going to range okay, setting six. Up for fire wave. Yep. Um, discarding some extra cards to get a higher quality rate load. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so would you say that was a misplay? I would. I think I think she missed a guaranteed lethal, unless I, unless it's something that I missed. Um, she is still. I don't think so. She is still favorite to win, uh, but giving Ryu that opportunity to come back, either by advancing or by changing cards, is not a good plan. Street Fighter characters in general are very good at comebacks. Right, because they have giant ultras that hurt for a bunch. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right, I think I think so. Here's a spicy line that I would want to take right now, is to reshuffle and then draw into Metsu Hadoken. Yes. I would agree with that. Um, I think reshuffling on Ryu's side is a good call. I think he should hold on to that block. Excuse me, this is this critical is Hadouken. Just, yeah, Hadouken number two, but we all know that she has Fire Wave, so... We don't know, or was it in her hand when it was revealed? Yeah, yeah, it uh -oh. was revealed. We know that she has Fire Wave. This is EX Fire Wave. Uh, then that's game. Good game. All right, yeah, she'll take three damage, is not stunned, and hit back for five. Yep. That was a very good draw on Enchantress's end near the end so that she could get the EX Fire Wave, because otherwise it wouldn't have killed. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'm going to update this. So I do think the turning point in that match was the earlier turn where Ryu got stuck in the mid-range with his Hadoken on top of the deck or in his hand or something like that. That gave Enchantress a lot of room to be able to do whatever Enchantress wanted to do, which was, you know, harry his hand. I do think a lot of Enchantress's utility boosts were able to help out in that matchup because she was essentially able to look at his hand, see his options, and then pluck a card from it. Mm -hmm. 
Mind Control is an incredibly potent boost. Enchantress leans a lot onto utility boosts, and she just doesn't have a lot of stats to throw around. She needs to leverage her resource advantage into actually winning, which means manipulating her opponents in various ways. And I think Ashlyn did that very well this game. So good game, Ashlyn. Mm -hmm. Well played. Well played, Rio as well. Uh, managed to present that Hadakin threats. But I think in the late game, uh, some reluctance to change cards cost him pretty dearly. Right, right. Some reluctance to change cards, because none of the threats were live. Everything in the deck was like just normals and stuff. That's mm -hmm. not really threatening against a character like Enchantress. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Enchantress is now dead, having won a game. Uh, that leaves Taisei and Vega. That's, that's <laughs> such an odd way to work. You've won a game! You're dead now! <laughs> yep. Um, has, uh, has, has gone on into glory. Um, and that leaves Taisei and Vega on Ashton's side against the team of Plague Knight Ryu and Chernalus. Uh Who would you run? Gosh, as, as Adniel, that would be a really... R See, I would just run Ryu again, because I think I think Ryu does decently well against the remaining two characters in Ashlyn's team, uh, especially against Vega. I think because uh, like even like early on, earlier on, it's gonna be really tough for Vega to do anything against Critadokens as well. So that's a really big thing. How about you? Uh, and so as Daniel, I would actually run Plague Knight here. Plague Knight has very early and explosive potential. Taisei is a character who, if you knock him out in the early game, can just fall over dead. And Vega is a character who is sensitive to highly mobile or uh, uh, characters with range superiority, which is something Play Knight specializes in. It looks like Anil like is running Turnalus into Vega. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a very interesting matchup because Vega has a lot of good ways to get to the corner. And um, let's just say that Turnalus might not have a lot of ways to close gaps. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure I agree with that, actually. Death Omen is an above curve, uh, close to attack, 1-2, one, 1-5. One, yeah, he has 1, right? Yes, and but the transformation on Grim Thunder Calling gives all of his normals the ability to close 1 by spinning a force. So if he can get, Hell's, absolutely fair. If he can get Hell's Reach into play, he'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the story of every Season 2 character, right? <laughs> if you get your Transform into play, you'll be fine. Yeah, well, y y you'll do very well with them in general. Tran uh, Turnalus is less reliant on individual transformations because literally everything in his deck is a transformation. For those who aren't familiar with Turney, um, his ability lets him transform normal attacks that give his special right. and ultras plus one power. So he has very low printed power to start with. Yeah, but once you get to the mid and late game, oh, Turnalus hits like a truck. Mm -hmm. Not only does he get that incremental value uh, as the game goes on, he also will eventually build 5 gauge or 5 transformations, and he can spend them in, in any combination to activate, uh, let's see, what's it called? Netherstorm? Yes? 13 power ultra? Yes. Pretty good card. Yes. Pretty good card. I think the big thing about this matchup is going to be how well Ashland can space Thornaloos. Because, yeah, you're right, Thornaloos does have ways to be able to close the gap, but if you space it just outside the range of his other attacks, you're generally safe against a turn to lose, or at least he has to play a predictable card for you to get in. Uh, and Vega has a lot of ways to take advantage of that. You know, he has Pounces, he has, um, gosh, what's the name of the other movie? He has Rolling Crystal Flashes. So oh, it's, man, it's, yeah. not, it's not easy, right? That's true. At range 3, I think Turney still has uh, one dominant option, which could be very important here, the eye. Right. Yeah, the eye. The eye is going to be very dangerous for Vega, but I don't think Vega wants to stay at those ranges anyway. And if he does want to strike from those ranges, he has Pounce and any of his other weird sweet like attacks. So That's I fair. think he's okay. This really boils down to how well Ashton's able to play this matchup. Because usually mm. Claw is really powerful because it allows you to essentially space your normals well. But you're against Ternalus. And Ternalus has some really good options in the normal ranges. Mm. So you might want to like use the Claw to essentially attack from four. That's actually a really potent way to go about this. Because even if he does his um his above curve attack, uh, it doesn't it doesn't beat sweep and it still probably loses the spike if you play it correctly. So there's there's a lot of ways around this. Mm -hmm. Proper use of spacing, proper use of claw, and of course um, Ashen being able to hit a big Barcelona probably determines this matchup. What do you think Turnalus should do? That's valid. Turnalus, uh, as always, needs to avoid uh, taking a lot of damage in the early game. So his goal is to accumulate as many transformations as he can as quickly as he can without losing a lot of life. He is what we call a ramp character, someone who just gets stronger and stronger as the game progresses. Uh, landing a lot of little hits and being evasive and tricky uh, is to his advantage. For example, it's right. unusual to see this play here. Uh, normally he would have gone to range 2 to be able to play the cross on offense. Absolutely correct. I don't think moving to range 1 is the best idea. I mean, Vegas. not It does get him into Vega's face. <laughs> yeah. Vega's not particularly great at one, but, you know, neither is Thornaloos. 
That's true. Normals exist, and they are the foundation of the game in a lot of ways. So these two characters trading at range one with normals uh, will actually benefit turn loose in the, in the long run. But if they can make use of that gauge to exceed or to land a huge Haymaker Ultra, um, it could be decisive before turn really gets online. Right. I, I think that's the big thing here. Being a season three character means that Vega has some really big whammy ultras, and if one of those just hits, it might be curtains for turn to lose. That's true. On the other hand, if Turney can trade fairly evenly for most of the game, uh, Netherstorm can close the game out from half life. Ooh, we have an this... offensive sweep. Oh, wow. What a rare and ballsy play. I like it. Uh, they're going to trade evenly. Um, er, right. One moment. Evenly. What's that, what's that saying? I like the cut of your jib. Yes. Um, yeah, so that'll get turn loose transformation, uh, and, uh, both players get one effective gauge. Uh, turn goes to Vega, and he's at range one, which, as we said, isn't bad, isn't great. Yeah, I mean, he just has normals. Mm. But I guess by default that means it's pretty bad, right? Because if you only have normals, then you become really predictable. I guess he has pounce. But, you know. Pounce is mediocre. Uh, critical Pounce is pretty good. Uh, we have Mass coming to play. That's one power, one armor, and it lets him sustain it if he's not stuns. This this kind of changes the makeup a bit, because now a lot of uh, Vegas slow moves now trade super well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. So we'll have to see how um, Thorn Loose does into this. Um, would you tech this boost? I would not. I would save my tech for a Claw or for a Light. Later in the game, Turney is speed sensitive. He only has one attack with any guard on it, so he tends to get stunned out by faster hits. Oh, good to say, good to know. Mm. What's Thorn Loose thinking? Oh, a strike. All right. Probably a slow play. Uh, no, I think it's going to be a fast play. I think it'll be a grass bear across. I think that's actually more correct than the slow play. Mm. A focus is, I... is reasonable, yeah. but trading it would trade down pretty badly here. That's wow, is that another yes. ex attack? Oh my oh goodness. Oh man, Ashland's drawing the nuts here. Alright, well, what do we get? So that has at least two armor, one guard, which means it isn't going to be stunned if that is the grasp. Yep. Eternal is really easily life be pounce, or easily just be focus, or easily. Like mm -hmm. any number of good EXs here. Yeah, right now. Pounce is pretty safe with just one copy or and or a critical. We have Scarlet, no, Terror. Scarlet Terror. Non crit Scarlet Terror. That's speed five, but it is one arm or two armor, one guard, which means it will probably not get stunned by anything. What do we right. get? And uh, it's a focus. It's a slow play, okay. I think that actually works out very well for Turney. Yeah. It'll react hey, to Sun Vega too. Hmm? Did I big brain? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell, but this does mean one thing though. Um Ashton's lost both copies of Rebel Leap. So uh, that's going to be really rough for some endgame close potential unless Ashton reshuffles. Mm -hmm. It's a very potent... Wait, hold on. Uh, gauge? Yes, that should go to Gauge. Yeah, Scarlet goes to Gauge. There you go. Yeah, but you can't, you can't sustain the mask because you got stunned, right? Correct. Reactive stun, uh, just enough to stun since it was four power on focus into the two armor, one guard. That was a big turnaround. I think that EX, like, 30 playing the slow play and then forcing an EX response is a huge turnaround, especially because the slow play was focused. So 30 just actually now has card advantage, despite striking into somebody with more cards than him earlier on. That's Indeed. wild. That's a big turn. Yep, that was that was a sort of a quote-unquote wasted EX. Of course, it still got value, but it was a special play not from the end of the arena, which means Vega didn't maximize the payout of that attack, uh, which gives Turney more time to build up. Right. Um, we'll see. It's an I. Oh, okay. that'll suck for Turney. <laughs> um, he does no damage, and he takes four. But he does get the transformation, and he does get to um, take advantage. So That's it's not true. as terrible as it looks, but it's still pretty bad. Yeah, normally you use uh, Evil Eye to chain advantage in the late game to set up your uh, Nether Storm or other closing attacks. Right. So this is a very early I. Right. <laughs> early I. It's also, yeah, usually you want to combo that when I itself is dealing like 4 or 5 damage. Indeed. Uh, being able to be resisted trivially by focus and by any EX attack is important. Oh, we have a critical? That is probably Pounce. Yep, it's Pounce. Yep, it's Pounce. Uh, but it will get stunned because Lightning Spike is up to 3 power now due to having 2 transformations in play. 2 normals transforms. That's me. such a good play from Cornelius' side. That yep. was a big read. That is a huge deal. All right, uh, that hit effect will get built him an actual gauge, which is always nice because Turney um, doesn't really he generate resources. Yeah, he has a bad economy. 
Uh, is that? Yeah, it's one card. Wow, he only had one card in this card. Turney is playing very efficiently. Right, and it seems like the life totals are very like close to each other. But reminder to all of the people watching, um, Tornaloose gets better the later in the game it gets. So if you're around the even right now, that means you're losing. That is correct. And if Vega ever drops to 15 life or less, he's likely to just get wiped out by Nether Storm. Nether baby. Yeah. Especially since uh, Scarlet Terror is not available. If Nether Storm comes online before that comes back into uh, Vega's rotation, that means that he he just won't be able to outspeed it because it's on curve. Yeah, this is really rough. Um, now that turn, oh, that's a wild swing. Yeah, fair. Mm -hmm. Grass the Grim Thunder calling. Oh, that's very good for Turney. He's able to close two to dodge the spike. Uh, hits for four, though he doesn't, so he doesn't stun it. But he gains advantage, gains a card, and gains an excellent transformation. That is Hell's Reach, the long-awaited Hell's Reach. Wait, what? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys don't trade. Well, unless... they can choose to trade. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, if they choose to trade, I do think that's just actively incorrect. Yes? Well, hold on. So, Turney ended up at 1, which means they didn't trade. But they they did just they just now corrected the life totals. Okay, so we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. I was getting lost a little bit there. If, Turney, okay had, if Turney had closed only one space, then they would have traded. And that would have been, you know, probably a mistake, but not an error. <laughs> right, right, right. It's not, it's not rules incorrect. It's just probably incorrect uh, for winning the game. Strategically you know? incorrect, yeah. All right, so Turney gained advantage uh, once more, and he now has Nether Storm live. Although it's not usually going to get played at range one. I would want to grasp right now. Wait, uh, wait, why? Um, it's it's Turner loses advantage. Yeah. So actually, right now, I, as Turner loses, I would grasp, so that mm -hmm. I can get Vega out of the corner. That makes sense. Uh, I would probably prepare. I'm feeling a little vulnerable without a uh, lot of cards drawn, and I want to be able to draw some, into some EX attacks. I'm kind of jealous of Vega right now. Uh, that's fair, but Vega only has two cards, too. It's true. Uh, that oh. is an invalid Splendid Claw. Hold on a minute. We don't know yet. Oof. Nice. Wow. Oof. It is. It does yeah. start to see another Ultra go down. So that's both copies of Splendid Claw out. But, um... But it's better than invalidating the other Ultra, because that one has Claw right. on it and is also just faster. Ironically that that thing has the Claw on it, despite the other one being called Splendid Claw. Hmm. Huh, good point. I guess they're trying to mask its true identity. Hey, okay, hey. at this point in time, I'm actually terrified they're starting to lose. Now I'm in Vega's world, right? This is Vega's ideal positioning. Uh, uh, one of the Grim Thunder callings is down, so this is actually terrifying. Hell's Reach is online, however, uh, so I can play an Above Curve Assault, and I also still have both Death Omens live. So I'm running at about speed 5, and both Scarlet Terrors are down, so I'm only afraid right, of rolling but, Crystal Flash. But Thorin Luce only has one card in hand, so he'd have to prepare, and that's like a 2 out of like 20-something cards. So well, it's if, Vega still strikes, a speed. if Vega Strikes, then it's absolutely a wild swing here, because Normals give you a decent ability to select into your attacks with Hell's Reach. Oh, absolutely, for sure. I do agree um, that Vega that, should probably be initiated. Yeah. You know? yeah. Right, right. It, this is Vega's world. Mm hmm. Definitely. Right. Though, is it is it Thornalus's turn? I think Vega prepared uh, on Vega's turn. It is Thornalus's turn. Uh, Ogre, uh, no. The transformations currently in play are Hell's Reach, which is before you may spend one force to close one. Um, the, I don't remember this Infernal one. Infernal Swiftness after you may spend one force mm -hmm. if you do retreat one. And then and your normal have assault. Plus two yeah. guard. Wait, is it actually called Unstoppable Assault? That's great, because it's really good to play it with the X Assault. Um, yes, it is. Oh, this is very interesting. So this might be the Omen, or this might just be an Assault. Yeah, um, probably the Omen. Yep, it's Omen. Yep, so it's he omen. doesn't he doesn't have less life, so he can't transform a card from hand, but he doesn't have a hand either, and this will move him closer, which is obviously good right now, because Vega's great at ranges 4+. plus. Right, 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 especially in the corner. Um, obviously, you probably don't want to seal your transformations right now. It's pretty low value. It's against a block. If he seals one, uh, then he could seal Infernal Swiftness. That is his lowest value transformation. Right, he's probably... Oh, it looks like he's about to seal it. It looks like he is. Maybe he just wants to get rid of options from Vega's hand, which is fair. Mm -hmm. Or at it, least, you know... It forces get Vega to spend some resources. Since these are both pretty resource-hungry characters with bad economies, it, uh, it makes a lot of sense here, I think, to just make him spend something. Oh, spins the copy of the other Ultra. Oh, well, that makes a bit of sense because we're, like, relatively close to each other, and currently yep. Thornaloose doesn't have a hand, so... Yep. That was, uh, for reference, a total power of 7 because Death Omen had uh, three normals transformed and then sealed a special transformation for plus 3. Um, right. So Vega spent two force to gain a total of 6 armor, taking only one damage. Vega is now initiating. 
This is terrifying. What do you this, think it would be? It's the Ultra. It's the other copy of Bloody High Claw. Oh my god. Please, I'm sure yes. Of it. Please, that deals yes. something like 10 damage? I don't know. Oh my gosh, there it, it is. is. Oh no! But it's grass. That Wait. means you can use Hell's Reach. If he sees it, if Turnalus doesn't see it, uh, then he will just straight up take, what is that, six, nine damage. All right, that's that's a lot of power. And then it also gives Vega instant setup for um, Barcelona next turn. Oh no, is Turnalus going to just take it? Oh, he took it. He, he took, took it. He took it. Oh no, he didn't see the line. Yep. He didn't see the line. That is an egregious misplay, and that will probably cost her to lose the game. It sets Vega up at the far end of the board where he can now threaten things, and Turney has no resources to move in. Right. This is just a Barcelona, Barcelona if Vega has it, right? Oh, if he has it, sure. I, I doubt. He's not likely to have it. I think he'll change cards, spending that uh, two force from Gage. Maybe the last card in hand, depending on what it is, trying to draw into those Barcelonas. Right. Yeah, you want to just basically dig for Barcelona right now. Yeah. It's still possible for Trinity to come back and win this, but uh, it's going to... Reshuffle. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult. I, I thought there was some live threat still in Vega's deck, specifically both Barcelonas, because we haven't seen either of them, so... Mm -hmm. That's quite an interesting line. Maybe maybe Ashton just wants to play more Ultras. I uh, could also be looking for... Hmm. No, actually, I legitimately don't know. Yeah, see, I would have I would have said Rolling Crystal Flash, but one copy is but... engaged, so I would have spent that first. Right, right, right. And, yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Turney here is either going to move or prep. Yeah, uh, most likely move. I want to move at least one space forward, because that's actually a Vega blind spot. It's five, and Vega's in the corner, which means that Barcelona doesn't hit, and none of Vega's range four sweeps hit. Wait, I thought Barcelona hit at range... I thought it hit everywhere except the center space. One spec. Uh, let me double check. Okay. Oh, it does. Yeah, you'd have yeah, to go to the center. Yeah, it does. You have to go to the center. My bad. Yep. Right. Which is where all of his other Never mix turn on, so... Yeah. So basically, it's choose what you want to lose to. <laughs> yeah. So Turney prepped uh, Vega to change cards two from Gage, drawing three from that fresh deck. Um, I do right. think there's one important factor here. Turney still has a block live. So if Vega plays Barcelona, and Turney's able to absorb the hit, he'll be able to hit back in close range, getting the advantage right. again. That's going to the center. Absolutely correct. Yeah, it gets rid of that Barcelona threat. Right. I would rather have to deal with Pounce and the other things than Barcelona, because Barcelona kills me. Uh, yeah, it can literally deal 9 damage if it's critical. Right. Uh, at least the other threats only deal, quote-unquote, only deal 6. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Vega building up that large hand of options and resources. Rearranging that hand, uh, subtly threatening some EXs. Right, there's a speed boost. Uh, that might mean he has the second omen up. It, uh, or it could mean that he has a spike in hands, because his spikes can hit from range 4. That's also completely true. Um, this is actually really interesting. I'm not sure who's actually winning, because, you know, all, all Turnaloos needs to do is hit Vega twice right now. Yep, or once if he has uh, Netherstorm. Oh, can Netherstorm confirm from this range? I don't think no, so, No, no, right? no, he has to move in one for that to happen. But if okay. Vega doesn't contest the Light Boost, uh, Turney can move in one and then be threatening Netherstorm or EX Netherstorm for lethal. Oh, God. Yeah, that... So I think the line would be something along the lines of... Um, Thornaloos plays, like, a spike on defense if Vega mm. decides to strike. Yeah. Then on his turn, just EX Netherstorm for the kill. Yeah, he then confirms in another storm if he does that. So Vega, like, in theory, striking with Vega is, is the best thing he can do, but it's very much not safe to do it if he's going to lose the spike. Right, right. Uh, gosh, I think I would just tech this boost right now. If I had the tech, yeah. Oh, that's Parry Netherstorm, almost certainly. Obviously Parry Netherstorm. Oh, there's there one. There you go. All right. One is still <laughs> alive, but we don't know if it's in hands. All right, Vegas saw the setup, got rid of one copy of another storm. I think, I think, on, I think one is still alive. I could be wrong. I believe so too. I haven't seen, I haven't seen it. Yeah. So Turney has some options here. I think he should probably just take the move action to move forward one. Maybe spin that gauge because he doesn't really need gauge for anything. It depends if he has another storm in hand still, right? Like. That's true, but he's presenting. He's presenting the threat either way. Uh, and four is not a bad range for Vega, so it might be just better to stand at three. But we do, we have lost both Rebel Repel Leap leaps. cards. Not yeah. actually Scarlet because of the reshuffle. Something. Vega oh, has now drawn, true. I think, five cards deep in that reshuffle. Yeah, that's fair. That's completely fair. Uh, we're striking right now, which means that... I, I'm, I'm thinking Spike here. Spike would be spicy. Spike would be pretty great. Uh, it could be Spike, Assaults, or Death Omen, all of which are good options. All right. I would play Spike just to get uh, Vega low. Oh, we have a critical. Oh, this might be Pounce. Oh, oh the other Scarlet. it is Speed 6 Scarlet. That is going to get outsped by a Speed 7 Assault. Good play by Turney. He's going to have to spend a Force right. to close in that extra space. Yeah, of course. Um, if he sees it... Technically, I don't think he would have played it if he didn't see it. 
Just to be honest. Right, that's fair. That's fair. Deciding what force to spin for that close one. Gonna spin the Probably gauge. Probably the gauge, yep. right? I mean, that's what you usually yeah. spin a turn because gauge is really just force for you. The exception okay. being Barguy's Fang. If you're spinning gauge for your speed six ultra, then you'll often actually spin gauge. Um, but you don't want to spin gauge on Nether Storm because you can seal your transformations and you're probably killing the opponent anyway. So that is uh, so here, four damage. Here's advantage. my question to you: Would mm -hmm. you gauge that assault or transform it? Oh, I would definitely transform it. It's too late to rely on a Barguy's Fang. Okay, cool. Yeah. So early game, it's if you get a couple of gauge with block or with the hit effects on some of your attacks, then it makes sense to use that gauge to play Barguy's Fang. But in other circumstances, gauge yeah. is really just a source for force. Vega needs to defend with grasp right now. I'm not sure I agree. I think uh, I think this could just be a grasp by Turney to get him out of the corner. Oh, what do we have? Yeah, this could be Nether Storm against like Ex Pounce. Ex Pounce is pretty good. Uh, Southpaw. Southpaw. All right, so that'll trade up. Uh, so it was non-critical because Vega's out of gauge now, so it only one, had one armor, and Southpaw has five power, so he'll deal four damage, right. and then Vega will deal eight. Eight. Oh, close. No cigar though. Almost yep. killed him. One short. Yeah. Takes the correct amount of damage. Uh, Turney apparently declines his hit effects. Which is interesting because uh -huh. it must mean that he can't transform the card in hand since uh, he's about to discard it either way. Right, right, right. It, it must be another copy of one of the normals that are already out. Mm -hmm. or, or specials either way. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting for that hit effects. Right. This Diabolic might might actually also be very relevant right now. Because you have um, your spikes now kill Vega. And your dives now kill Vega. Alright, here we go. Wait, spike doesn't... Oh, you, you just mean the power, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, just mean the power. Looks like Turney, after realizing that he was going to have to discard it, elected to transform Barguy's Fang. Uh, I, I can actually see not transforming that. It's a fairly low value transformation, and it is two force in hands. Right. Um, and there is Retrieve. Okay, probably gonna get Claw, right? Uh, I would get Light. Like, at one life? That's also fair. Uh, turning at one life, I'm threatening Lethal. Oh, it is Claw. No, but does, does Ashlyn have Light, but then she reshuffle? Oh, maybe she hasn't dropped one yet. Yeah, I think you're right. Right. So okay. here's my... That makes sense. That's actually really interesting to me, because I don't want to be at this range against Tourney with possible Netherstorm. So that tells to me that Ashlyn has a Cross in her hand, and Cross does lose to uh, Evil Eye, though. So if, right. if Trini has Evil Eye, I think he 100% plays it. Right. I think I think the correct play might have been to Barcelona all the way to the opposite edge of the board. If she had it. Uh, if, if Vega had it. She we did. She, she, she discarded it to pay for Claw. Oh, I didn't notice. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll see. Uh, uh, sorry. Strike I Vega. mean, she discarded it to pay for Retrieve, which got Claw. Right, right. I figured what he meant. Um, so Vega's initiating. This could, this could very well be the cross. Um, right. But if, if Thorin Luz just has I, I think I would wild swing for the I. That's I would, the out, right? Or block. I would look for I or block. All right. We'll see. That's it the cross. It is cross. It is, is no. Critical. Yep. That is going to be Good lethal. game. Good game. Vega takes right. it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think there was some misplays on Thorin Luz's part. Uh, specifically... The one where he decided to just eight, eat eight damage. Yes, that was crucial, um, and I think that we can safely say that it cost him the game and therefore the set. Right, right. Uh, quite unfortunate, but hey, you know, you live and you learn, like that one song says. Yep. All right. Um, thank you very much for uh, joining me for this stream. I think that will conclude the set, so we're gonna close down here. Yeah. All right. Hey, Daniel. Thanks for casting with me. Uh, I was so mm -hmm. happy to be with you on your stream. Yep. All right, and I will see you around the Discord. Bye, everyone. Bye.